Montgomery County has seen an increase in crime and, and one of the categories that's up has been carjacking. Mayor say the county police is trying to increase the number of women in its ranks. What are your thoughts about those efforts? Absolutely, any effort to um, have our police uh, force reflect the residents that they're that they're protecting is going to be a step in the right direction. And women, um, as uh, MCPD Commander Amy Dom has has been heard saying, you know, women are less likely to be involved in cases of excessive use of force. They are less likely to have complaints filed against them by 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 uh, community members. Of, you know, um, and also are more likely to to find uh, better outcomes when it comes to um, intimate partner violence and, and, and survivors of sexual crimes, et cetera. So absolutely. And I just want to caution that as we are increasing those, um, um, those efforts in recruiting women, that we also make sure that there's no pay gap, that we're creating the same types of uh, opportunities so that they not only join the force, but also can go up in the ranks in the, in, in the, hier in the hierarchy of the force itself. Um, and absolutely, I think that I'm, I'm thrilled to, to hear about this. And I think that the county's gonna be uh, way better served if we have more women on the force, absolutely. So, I agree uh, with that 100%, Mark. So, uh, <laughs> so let's move on to a DC judge recently ruled that a, a man smoking medical marijuana had to stop because of, of the nuisance factor. Uh, basically it was interfering with, with a, uh, with a neighbor. So this is a secondhand smoke issue. Um, what are your thoughts, Jim? Is, is, should we have the same rules uh, should, for secondhand smoke? How should we apply that? Well, you, you know, smoking marijuana is basically legal. But right. however, if your conduct doing that or something else affects others, then I, I would agree with the judge that if your conduct affects your neighbor or others, then there should be some rule uh, for that person to stop it or at least mitigate the fact that it goes next door. Uh, but if it doesn't affect your neighbor or anybody else, you're free to smoke as much pot as you want in your own apartment. So let's but if take it, it others. So, Marisay, let's take it one step further. One of the issues that's come up with the county council is whether or not police officers should have uh, permitted or allowed or encouraged to stop people in cars where they suspect smoke, uh, that pot smoking is taking place. Now, there's a, a trade-off between the fact, as, as Jim mentioned, there's decriminalization, but on the other hand, you can perhaps have driving while impaired. How do you set that balance right? Absolutely. Um, and this is coming from, you know, a, a liberal here. Um, so I think here you have, you have two balancing acts. First is obviously public safety, and the other um, is just being equitable and making sure that we're not profiling folks, right? So under the driving while impaired laws, um, it's my understanding that, you know, pot is part of that as well. Now there has to be an underlying, um, you know, traffic violation or some kind of probable cause that the, the impaired driving is obviously, you know, creating some kind of a public safety issue. So I don't disagree with that. I think that, um, you know, it's part of the growing pains. We will see more um, you know, ac actions in the courts and in the legislatures as well. And I think as, you know, our society becomes um, more savvy as to, you know, how to spot, you know, pot, uh, you know, driving while, while high, et cetera, and the technology catches up, then we are, our police force and our law enforcement authorities will have uh, the wherewithal to be able to um, accurately identify when it is, act when it is just and fair to stop someone because uh, they're suspected of uh, driving while impaired because of um, the effects of marijuana. Uh, 